our mountains. They are so beautiful. But they are also unpredictable and dangerous. How are the Alps changing as it gets warmer in Switzerland? and as snow becomes more scarce and the permafrost thaws. How can we protect ourselves against the dangers facing us today and in the future? Am SLF forschen wir, damit man die Naturprozesse besser versteht. Das Verständnis für Antriebe für fundamentale Prozesse, sei es eine Lawine, sei es ein Steinschlag, sei es ein Murgang, ist extrem wichtig. Und dass ich ähm, dazu beitragen kann, dass wir verstehen, wie unsere Erde sich verändert und warum sie sich verändert. Die Faszination Schnee, ich glaube, die hat jeden in sich. Ich bin sehr gerne Forscher. Ich habe halt wirklich die Chance, neue Sachen zu entwickeln. Off piste, the danger of avalanches is a constant threat. In Switzerland, an average of 23 people a year are killed in avalanches. Over 90% of the victims trigger the avalanches themselves. This is why it is so important for people to behave correctly and to get the latest information about the avalanche danger. It is 5 a.m. in the morning at the WSL Institute for Snow and Avalanche Research, or SLF for short. Die Stimmung im Winter, wenn man hier im Januar ankommt, das ist dunkel. Alles ist dunkel, also man macht erstmal alle Lichter an. Christine Pielmeier draws on a wealth of information to create the latest Avalanche Bulletin. Und wenn man ganz im Detail schaut, da fasziniert mich der Schnee, weil der Schnee verändert sich ständig. Das ist eigentlich wie in einem Kochtopf. In der Schnee, der gebrodelt, das verändert sich die ganze Zeit. Und wenn ich jetzt zurück zum Lawinenbüter meiner Arbeit komme, man muss diese Prozesse verstehen, damit man eine seriöse Prognose machen kann. Christine Pielmeier is one of eight Avalanche forecasters. These days, she uses computer programs developed especially at SLF to help her produce the Avalanche Bulletin. Solche Produkte kann man auch nicht von der Stange kaufen. Das gibt es einfach nicht. Es gibt einen Lawinenwarndienst in der Schweiz und, und dafür müssen wir eigentlich die Software auch selber bauen. For those responsible for the safety of local communities and ski resorts, the Avalanche Bulletin is an important basis for decisions. After assessing the situation on site, they have to decide. Should they detonate an avalanche to make the ski slopes more secure? Must a road be closed because of avalanche danger? Or can it remain open? The bulletin is not produced at the push of a button, but through teamwork. The avalanche forecasters discuss the most recent assessments. They analyze data from the measurement stations and evaluate information they have received about the local terrain. More than 200 people throughout Switzerland are involved in monitoring snow conditions and avalanches. They regularly dig snow profiles like this one. The cross-section through the snow cover reveals its structure. From 24 to 23. Yeah. Weak layers in the snow cover are decisive in the formation of avalanches. Careful, it uh, goes down on both sides of the, of the couloir. This avalanche was deliberately detonated for research purposes. The SLF avalanche test site has been in operation since 1997. 
When an avalanche thunders down into the valley, about 200 sensors measure the speed, temperature, and impact pressure of the huge snow masses. From a protective bunker, researchers and technicians can follow the avalanche up close and keep an eye on the measurements. The data collected is important for calculating how far an avalanche could advance and what force it might develop. This information helps assessing whether buildings are in vulnerable areas and is useful for planning protective structures such as galleries. At first glance, snow looks like an even white mass. But in reality, snow is a complex material that is constantly changing and altering its properties. To uncover the secrets about avalanche formation, you have to start small with individual snow crystals. Im Kältelabor haben wir die Möglichkeit, den Schnee als Material im Detail anzuschauen. Und das bildet die Grundlage für ganz viele andere Projekte, die am Laufen sind, bei uns am Institut oder auch an anderen Instituten. Jörg Drachsel uses a computer tomograph to analyze a snow sample. When strongly magnified, you can see how the individual snow crystals have grown together at the points of contact. Poorly bonded snow crystals are common in the notorious weak layers and are decisive for slab avalanche formation. Wir untersuchen im Kältelabor auch international Schneeproben. Also einerseits sind das sogar von Expeditionen, also von der Pol oder von Grönland. Der ganze Transport, die ganze Kühlkette muss ja geschlossen sein. Das heißt, die Proben sind dann mehrere Monate unterwegs, bis sie schlussendlich bei uns im Kältelabor landen. Und so werden die ganze Schneedecken aus der Antarktis in unserem Computertomograph analysiert. In Gegenwart von Bundesrat Etter, Chef des Departements Innern, wird das Eidgenössische Institut für Schnee- und Lawinenforschung auf Weißflur Joch eingeweiht, das für unser Land von großer Bedeutung ist. Diesem fällt die wichtige Aufgabe zu, die Maßnahmen zu studieren, um die Bergbevölkerung, die zahllosen Skifahrer und unsere Soldaten vor dem weißen Tod zu schützen. Snow Research in Switzerland began on the Weißflur Joch above Davos. Some devices from that time are still used today, for example the RAM probe, which measures the hardness of the snow layers. Today, more modern equipment is also used to measure hardness. Since as long ago as 1936, SLF has operated a test site with measurement stations on Weißflujoch. It is the only place in the world where snow and weather have been continuously measured at this elevation for over 80 years. The test site provides important data for future research. The climate change is a big challenge because we have to find in any direction with greater extremes. Global warming is making snow a scarce resource. Ski resorts are therefore increasingly dependent on technical snow. SLF advises ski resorts on how they can optimize their snow management. For example, computer modeling can help produce snow at the right place and at the right time. This saves water and energy and is more environment friendly. Alles wird extremer. Sehr trockene Sommer, sehr heiße Sommer und dann Phasen mit sehr intensiven Niederschläge. Und das hat einen Einfluss auf zum Beispiel die Hangstabilität. Higher temperatures and less snow do not mean fewer natural hazards. The WSL Institute for Snow and Avalanche Research, SLF, is investigating how hazards could change in the future. For example, will wet snow avalanches become more frequent? In August 2017, huge quantities of rock fell from Pizzo Cengalo in Bergel. Eight people were killed. Immediately after the rock avalanche, a debris flow consisting of mud and rocks 
flowed down to the village of Bondo, causing enormous damage. Researchers at SLF are investigating whether hazard chains are becoming more frequent and how best to protect against them. Forests provide a very important form of protection against avalanches and rockfall. They are also being affected by climate change. How do trees react to drought, higher temperatures and CO2? This is something SLF is researching on Stilberg near Davos, among other places. In 1975, 92,000 trees were planted on the test site. Researchers are investigating the protective capacity of the mountain forest here and observing changes in the alpine flora. With RAMS, a computer model developed at SLF, rockfall and other natural hazards can be simulated. The tool is used worldwide, for example by engineering firms. They can use the simulation program to calculate how far boulders might fall and which areas are at risk. Also, the good thing is that the simulation results are exactly the same as the ones we actually find. The model is used to create and test hazard maps, as well as for planning protective structures. For the computer model to reproduce reality as accurately as possible, it must be fed with measurement data from experiments. Bis zum Punkt, wo der große Helikopter der zweieinhalb Tonnen Stein oben auf der Plattform ableitet und man dann nachher kann loslassen, dass alles funktioniert hat, bis dort bin ich natürlich sehr angespannt gewesen. This 2.5-ton concrete block has been sent thundering down the mountainside by Andrin Gavietzel and other researchers many times. Es ist ein bisschen lässig. Ich meine, das Feuer muss brennen. Man muss es lässig finden, um ins Feld zu gehen. Und das ist das, was auch extrem wichtig ist für die Arbeit. Setting the heavy stone in motion requires a hydraulic platform, which was built in the SLF workshop. The concrete block contains sensors that measure acceleration and rotation. A high-speed camera records the trajectory. Each block sent rolling down the slope helps the researchers assess the threat more precisely. Rockfall and debris flows are a permanent risk in the mountains. What will happen when more and more of the permanently frozen ground, known as permafrost, thaws in the Alps. Marcia Phillips and her team drilled a 40-meter-long borehole through the summit of the Gemstock and installed temperature sensors in the mountain. This and about 30 other boreholes make it possible to observe permafrost across the whole of Switzerland. Permafrost is a part of the cryosphere, also the world of glacier, snow and ice. And this cryosphere changes momentan am schnellsten wegen der Klimaänderung. The data show, for example, that the temperature in the rock on the east ridge of the Jungfrau rose by half a degree between 2009 and 2018. Unsere langfristigen Serien sind ein bisschen wie ein Krimi. Ich kann nicht sagen, es findet nicht statt, weil meine Messreihen zeigen mir ganz deutlich, dass wir Veränderungen haben. Ja, es macht mir Sorgen. If the permafrost thaws, steep rock flanks may become unstable and endanger infrastructure like mountain cableways. Building methods must therefore be adapted by, for example, installing special anchors. The 140 people employed at SLF in research and technology are continually producing new findings. They study an environment that is constantly changing and are developing solutions to protect society. So that life in the mountains remains as safe as possible. <laughs>